what's up everybody welcome back to the Tano channel my name is Tano and um, yeah a huge thank you to everybody for the kind comments uh, under my first ever viral video that I did uh, for MSI actually so uh, the last review the last video that I did was from the MSI GTX uh, 1080 Ti uh, gaming X version and um, yeah, for that I thought to make a small quick little extra video or an intro or something special for the video card because it was absolutely magnificent and um, yeah, it went viral and uh, it's getting a lot of exposure all around the world which is uh, really cool and uh, yeah, if you've uh, come to my channel uh, from that video and you stayed and subscribed, huge thank you guys! Uh, it means uh, the world to me. But in today's video, for those of you who haven't seen my viral video and are just looking at the Aegis X3 review, uh, for you today, I am going to give my verdict uh, today. Uh, we're gonna check out uh, how good is the Aegis X3. And this one is the Gaby Lake uh, newest 7 series Intel CPUs, the Gaby Lake CPUs, and it is water cooled and it does have a Z270 motherboard in it with a 7700K in it. So, overclocking? No. Which is odd, but it is still a pretty decent machine. How good exactly? That's what we're gonna discuss today here. I'm gonna run through my benchmarks and everything and um, yeah, I'm gonna give my verdict for it. So, let's take a small quick little peek at the Aegis X3 and then let's start uh, talking about it. <laughs> So now that we've seen a small closer peek at the Aegis X3, I mean, it does look absolutely stunning. There's hardly anything bad to say about it. Uh, it looks good and it performs even better, I guess. Uh, I've been using the Aegis X3 for quite some time now, actually, because uh, uh, I needed a PC for my fan event that I did for my Estonian fans here in Estonia, and I did it in a huge IMAX uh, cinema, uh, which is the biggest IMAX screen in the Baltics. So that was pretty amazing. Over a hundred fans turned up, and it was yeah one of the <laughs> best times of my life uh, in terms of uh, well, what I've done in YouTube. And uh, yeah, the Aegis X3 ran everything per perfect, no issues at all, uh, perfect frame rates and uh, stuff like that. So yeah, an absolutely incredible machine. But what does it uh, have inside of it? Well, uh, it does have the 7 series Intel Core i7 7700K with 4 cores and 8 threads uh, running at uh, 4.2 gigahertz. And this one here is the K version actually, meaning yeah, you can overclock this bad boy, just not with this exact motherboard, which kind of leaves me wondering, why even use a K-series CPU in it? Anyway, moving on to the video card, it uses the MSI GTX 1080 Gaming X, the 8GB video card in it, with the phenomenal Twin Frozer 6 cooler on it which uh, means this card will be 100% passive under 60 degrees Celsius. Basically, 100% passive and noiseless video card when surfing the web or playing something light like uh, Hearthstone. Now, for the main memory, it uses 16 gigs of DDR4 memory running at 2400 MHz. Uh, there are two 8 GB SAW DIMM uh, memory modules on the motherboard one on each side of the motherboard and um, yeah this motherboard eats laptop memories which is interesting but i guess it is all to do with the pc being really compact and all the motherboard itself on the aegis x3 using t7 series intel cpus is a custom built uh, msi board with the z270 chipset but yeah, no overclocking functionality on this Z, Z270 board. And uh, also you cannot control the CPU or chassis fans in the BIOS. 
although this might change with a future BIOS update. Now for the main storage, this exact model has two 256GB Plexter PX256M8PEGs in it, running in RAID 0, which um, resulted in 2900MB per second read speeds and about 1500MB per second write speeds at 91% of the drive space being used and I did run the crystal disk mark uh, to get these results. Again, a great result and thanks to so many M.2 ports, uh, the upgradability for future M.2 storage devices is uh, great. The secondary storage is a 2TB 3.5-inch Seagate ST2000DM001 drive which uh, produced 210 megabytes per second read speeds and 210 megabytes per second write speeds. That is an awesome result for a 2 terabyte regular 3.5 inch hard drive. Also, the chassis does have room for total of two uh, 3.5 inch regular hard drives and one 2.5 inch. Oh, and yeah, it even has an optical drive fit into it, for some odd reason, as nobody really uses these things anymore. Nowadays, it feels like an added VHS player or something. Anyway, for the cooling, it does have the Silent Storm cooling too from MSI for the chassis and also the CPU is water cooled with a single 120mm fan and radiator. The GPU itself has of course the incredible Twin Frozer 6 on it, which is uh, one of the very best cooling solutions out there at the moment for a video card. And uh, yeah, just want to mention that the power supply unit is a 600 watt Fortran and has cables for two 6 plus 2 bin connectors for the GPU. So you can easily use a GTX 1080 Ti or a Titan XP in it. I mean, overall, the more I'm talking about this PC, the better it gets. And I mean, even the upgradeability parts are really easy. Uh, MSI has uploaded uh, YouTube instructions how to switch out some parts. And it is really easy to switch out the uh, video card, the memory, the storage. And even the CPU is pretty easy, but the CPU can be difficult to get into because the Silent Storm 2 cooling is a little bit tricky to get out. But anyway, coming to the I.O. We do find a lot of ports behind the PC and a few extra ones in front of it. What are they, you may ask? Well, it has two USB 2.0 ports, six USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, on HDMI out and on HDMI inboard. Why the inboard? Well, you can hook a HDMI cable from the back of the video card to the inboard to bring the HDMI signal to the front of the case. So you can enjoy a lot more easier VR experience and extend the HDMI cable that much more. It really is a great feature if you are using uh, VR devices. Of course, we do also find the audio outputs and an optical outboard. There are also two Wi-Fi antenna connectors there, meaning, yep, this PC does have Wi-Fi capability. And yeah, it does have a regular LAN and a ancient PS2 board. Behind the video card itself, we find three display boards, one HDMI and one DVI-D board. Now, coming to the front of the case, we find one USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C board and two USB 3.1 Gen 1 boards with Supercharger 2 capability. There are also mic and headphone boards and of course the HDMI out board. Now, coming to the design itself, it is absolutely stunning. The MSI design team has really outdone themselves once again with the Aegis X3. It looks super cool and it performs super cool, literally. Also, the MSI Mystic Light provides some extra touch in the way of some colors. Especially cool when looking at it uh, at night. And MSI even managed to make the coolest looking headphone hangers 
ever. I mean, it looks like Chappie now. <laughs> really, really cute. But at the same time, looking fine as hell. Now, coming to the temperatures. So I ran some testing and uh, checked out uh, what the temps do. And um, yeah, everything in idle in an about 23 degrees Celsius room. The CPU hovers at around 38 to 42 degrees Celsius, which is amazingly good. And that all comes thanks to the really nice single 120 mm uh, water cooling setup inside the Aegis Extreme. The video card stays at about 42 degrees Celsius in idle, which is again a stellar result. Why? Well, because that bloody thing is passive below 60 degrees Celsius. I guess these results are being helped a bit thanks to the very interesting case fan, uh, the Silent Storm Cooling 2, that sucks the hot air from around the motherboard out. And that fan is the only fan that makes noise from time to time when you are just surfing the web, which uh, kinda is a bit annoying, but you can always disconnect the fan if you wish. But mind you that this will increase the temperatures of some of the parts inside the PC. Although not very much likely. So if you don't mind that it auto controls the fans in idle sometimes a bit too much, um, then leave it be. Now, running 3D Mark stress test to stress the CPU and GPU together with enough power to get a proper result uh, of what the actual temperatures would be when doing some heavy gaming. Then, after about 30 minutes of uh, that stress test, the CPU rose to 72 to about 80 degrees Celsius and the GPU rose to 78 degrees Celsius which are perfectly in the normal range. And for the noise level, well, thanks to the water cooling and the incredible Twin Frozer 6 cooler on the 1080, coupled with the MSI Silent Storm 2 cooling, the noise was pretty low, considering this was a proper 30 minute stress test. You would expect a fully blown vacuum cleaner noise from air cooling, but not the case here. It was maybe 20 to 30 percent louder than in idle. So, really, I couldn't even tell that I was running a stress test next to me. Now, one of the biggest downsides uh, for myself is the power supply unit. Why? Well, not because it's weak or anything, it is in fact a Fortran 600 watt power supply unit and Fortran aka FSP are well known for their quality power supply units. For decades now actually. I've owned many of them over the years and they indeed are one of the better quality power supply units out there. Okay, well, how is this a downside then? Well, yeah. It uses a 40 millimeter fan in it and it makes a ridiculous distinct sound even when idling the PC. If I could compare this sound to anything, I would compare it to an old dying hard drive like those 1 gigabyte um, 3.5 inch hard drives. I mean, for the love of God, why? Why cannot someone develop a similar sized power supply unit but have it with a bigger fan that wouldn't make a distinct irritating sound when it operates? I made a quick video for you guys to explain this sound so check it out now. Anyway, if you can handle the sound on a regular basis then by all means the MSI Aegis X3 is a beautiful beast of a machine. Absolutely drop dead gorgeous design and has the power of a huge monster PC. But does it have a huge price tag also? Well, so so. I mean, it does have the GTX 1080 in it with a proper 7700K and the CPU is water cooled and it has two M.2 SSDs in RAID 0 plus much much more stuff in this really nicely designed PC. 
So, I mean, the price can be justified here. The price for this exact model is about $2,000 on Amazon. Now, I virtually built the same VC using regular parts from the shop you can find. Uh, the same CPU, same video card, same memory and hard drives, but different motherboard case, power supply, optical drive and CPU cooling. And uh, the price came to over 1600 euros here in Estonia. So about 400 euros extra for a custom special built MSI design small form factor PC ain't that bad. But if you are tight on money, then of course building your own PC from scratch will always be cheaper than getting a pre-built and custom brand designed PC. Alright, so I guess it's time to move on to some benchmarking results. And before we begin with our benchmarks, I'm gonna put the entire uh, specs of the machine in front of you right now. So you can check it out uh, right now, maybe pause the video to have a more clearer picture of it. And of course I'm gonna show you what drivers I used for this exact run here. And yeah, let's begin our test with the 3D Marks and uh, especially from the 3D Mark uh, Firestrike. So, in 3D Mark Firestrike, it received a score of 18,083 points, which is almost the same as my own huge X5960 PC running at 4.6 GHz with the same video card and proper desktop memory. Absolutely great result. Next up was DirectX 12 Benchmark T 3D Mark Time Spy, and it got 7,112 points. That's only about a 700 point difference with my huge X99 system uh, with the same video card. Really great result. Now moving on from 3D marks to some gaming benchmarks, I wanna let you guys know that each and every benchmark that I ran in games are ran at ultra detail without any anti-aliasing on 1080p. And the first uh, test that I did was from Battlefield 1. And um, it scored an average FPS of 148 frames per second on 1080p. Again, a great result for such a tiny PC. Moving on to 200% scaling, which basically is 4K resolution, it got a result of 66 frames per second, which is spot on with my 4.6 GHz 5960X system. That is incredible! So, the higher the resolution, the better this thing performs compared to other similar systems. Next up was Grand Theft Auto 5, where even the advanced settings were cranked up to the maximum detail. In the fourth and the longest pass of the benchmark, it received an average FPS of 90 frames per second, which is a bit down from uh, other similar systems, but it will do better in 4K. Sadly, I don't own a 4K screen at the moment of this test. Anyway, moving on to Tom Glance's Division, a graphical masterpiece of a game. It scored an average FPS of 95 uh, frames per second. So pretty decent result there also, but again, in 1080p, a bit slower than a similar desktop PC counterpart. But it is to be expected, I guess. And uh, lastly, I ran the latest Hitman game, uh, the DirectX 12 benchmark in it, and it received an average FPS of 121 frames per second, coming really close again to my 4.6 GHz uh, 5960 X system. And that kinda concludes my benchmarking results uh, of the IGS X3. I mean, overall, the IGS X3 with the newest Intel 7 series CPUs Underwater cooling is definitely a magnificent machine to have. Some really really stellar performance in games on 1080p and scales even better with other huge PCs on 4K. So what is my verdict going to be for the MSI Aegis X3? Well, I'm going to give it a 9.1 out of 10 and yeah, this, this might be one of the best small form factor PCs that MSI has ever built. Great cooling, great looks, great performance, great bang for buck ratio. And the only negative thing here is the power supply unit's fan, which is annoying with its distinctive sound. 
But if you can count that out, it has pretty much everything that you need from a top-end gaming PC. So, that's gonna be it for my MSI iX X3 review. I hope you enjoyed the review. I hope you learned something new from this exact uh, model here. And if I left something out and you want me to cover it in some future reviews, then leave a comment down below. If you have any questions about the iX X3, leave a comment down below. And uh, if you have some tips or just wanna talk to me, leave a comment down below. And definitely slap a like on this video and Definitely subscribe to my freaking awesome YouTube channel. Do you know that I make viral videos sometimes too? <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching my video here. I'll be uh, back at you with some other new videos soon. So stick around on my YouTube channel and I'll be seeing you soon guys. Thanks for watching another episode of my reviews and I'll be seeing you soon. Ciao.